All right, hello and welcome back to another Mr. Pisto Plays Magic the Gathering Arena Brawl Deck Tech and Game Play Session. We are here with Zariel, Archduke of Advernus, a four mana four loyalty planeswalker, has a plus one of giving your creatures plus one plus zero and haste. It has a zero of create a one one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. And then it has a minus six, you get an emblem with at the big end of the first combat phase on your turn untap target creature you control after this phase there's an additional combat phase so her main objective in the deck is giving creatures that are bigger than her or after creatures come down haste so we can run down our opponent if you're new to the channel think about slamming that like button and the subscribe button like wizards owes us historic brawl that would be lovely also hit this um notification button so that uh you get notified when my content comes online all right we're gonna go through the creatures we're gonna go through the spells and we're gonna play a few games so we have axe guard cavalry another way to give our bigger creatures haste Embrass Shieldbreaker destroys an artifact with its uh sorcery adventure otherwise it's just a vanilla two one target intimidators a two mana three one that has a bunch of different abilities cowards can't block warriors is a static ability you can turn target creature into a coward so it can't block your warriors you can give it plus one plus one and you can give a warrior trample till the end of turn you can only do each one once and each one costs a generic mana so it attacks really well it attacks through little smaller things you can get in a bit of damage it's quite good there robber the rich is a fun one two mana two two reach in haste the reach doesn't quite make sense but De la vie. Uh, when it attacks, if you have less cards in your hand, you get to exile the top card of your opponent's library, and you can cast that spell with any mana of any color you wish. So it's a good aggressive card if you can get it down early, or it's good in the late game when you can top deck it, and hopefully you do have less cards in your hand than your opponent. You can attack in, and you can at least rip one card off the top of the deck, and hopefully you can cast it. We have some three drops here. We have Arnie Broken brow we are wanting to attack this is a good attacker it's a three mana three three for the haste and it has both one generic mana his power becomes one plus the greatest power among other creatures you control until the end of turn so you end, if you have another three three he becomes a four three and then it scales as your creatures get bigger bone crusher giant deals two damage any target and that damage can't be vented for its stomp so it kills something smaller it does a little bit of chip damage on your opponent otherwise it's a three mana four three so it's just a big beefy three drop creature and when it gets targeted either by you or your opponent you deals two damage to that opponent's controller we have annex hardened in the forge scales its power is equal to your devotion to red so the more red mana symbols in your permanence the bigger its power is then it gives you board inevitability if your board happens to get all wiped out you get a 1-1 satyr if a, if a creature's power is three or less if a creature's power is four or greater you get two so it helps us with board inevitability flame skull is a new card from DD. i think is quite cool it is flying and can't block so it is basically just attacking and then it has something called rejuvenation so when it dies you get to exile it and if you do you exile the top card of your library as well and then till the end of your next turn you may play one of those cards so if you exile flame skull and you rip something better than flame skull off the top of your deck you're obviously probably going to cast that card and then flame skull will be exiled forever but if you do something that you don't want you can just cast flame skull again we have phoenix of ashes another good aggressive flyer it has haste it has fire breathing of a green a red and two colorless gets plus two plus one to the end of turn and you can use your graveyard we don't have very many ways if this is kind of the only way to use a graveyard you can escape it for four and two colorless also exiling three other cards from your graveyard it escapes with a one one counter on it so it's the gift that keeps on giving and then we have crystalline giant it's effective it's easy to cast it doesn't matter what mana you have it's a three mana three three and then when you go into the beginning of your combat you get one of flying first strike death touch hexproof lifelink menace reach trample vigilance one one counter and you put that kind of counter on the creature so if it can survive for long enough or gets locked into a hexproof uh, counter early it's kind of hard to stop 
So it's just a very efficient creature in that case. We have some four drops with Delina, Wild Mage, another new um, creature card, another new legendary card. It is a coin flip card. So it's a four mana, three, two, I mean, dice roll. You roll a D20. If you roll a one through four, you create a token of a tapped and attacking. Okay. Whenever Dina, Wild Mage attacks, choose target creature you control. Then roll a D20. Got ahead of myself. I'm excited. I love mono red. Uh, you could, so a one through 14, you create a tapped and attacking token. It's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary and it has exile this creature at the end of combat. So you can do copy any creature you have. If you roll a 15 to a 20, you get to create one of those tokens and then you roll again. So you could roll like 15, 17, 16, and then 12 and get four tokens. It's pretty cool. Then we have Tectonic Giant is a four mana three, four. When it attacks or becomes a target of an a spell an opponent controls, you either deal three damage to each opponent or you exile the top two cards of your library. You choose one of those and until the end of turn, your next turn, you may play that card. So this is kind of the way that we're gaining card advantage through cards like Flame Skull, Tectonic Giant. This is also just a good efficient beater that hits very hard. Taralf, God of Fury, and Taralf's Hammer. We're probably casting it on the God of Fury side. A 4 mana, 5 forward trample. Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess non combat damage, Perf deals damage equal to that, that excess to any target other than that permanent. So we have a couple of big X spells with like Shatter Skull Smashing and Crackle with Power that we can hopefully bounce and put it onto other things if we have Toralf out we also have his hammer it's two mana for an e and 40 equip or two to equip equip creature has red and a, a colorless unattached Toralf's hammer it does three damage to any target return Toralf's hammer to its owner's hand your equipped creature gets plus three plus low as long as it's legendary so we have a few legendary creatures in the deck so that could come up as something but more often than not we cast this as Toralf then we have Torbrand, Thane of Redfell. If you're playing mono red until rotation, you're going to play Thane of Redfell. 4 mana, 2, 4. If a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or an opponent's a permanent and opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus 2. So it just makes it so that our spells and our creatures deal more damage. Then we have a few 5 and 6 drop creatures. We have Goldspan Dragon, 5 mana, 4 for Flyer. When an attacker is targeted by a spell, it gets a treasure token and your treasure tokens sacrifice to add two mana of any one color we see this all over the place it's a fantastic card we have quake bringer we have the tectonic giant in the deck to help maybe deal two damage from the graveyard but for the most part it's a four five or four mana five four which stops your opponents from gaining life and then if quake bringer uh, at the beginning of your upkeep quake bringer deals two damage to each opponent it triggers only a quick is on the battlefield or if or is in your graveyard and you control a giant so if it's in our graveyard and we have tectonic giant out or we have crystalline giant we have bone crusher giant we're dealing two damage on a turn which is quite nice we have another five drop in terror of the peaks five mana five four flyer spells your opponents control that target this uh, pay three life to cast so if they want to target it they have to take three damage and then when another creature enters the battlefield under your control it deals damage uh, equal to that creature's power to any target so we can take down a lot of big things with that we have inferno of the star mounts another new card from D, D. six mana flying haste can't be countered so it's good against the control matchups it has fire breathing of one red it gets plus one plus oh until the end of turn and if you make its power 20 using this ability it deals 20 damage to any target Good luck doing that. Maybe we'll get there. We have another legendary creature, Morog Fury of Akum. The six mana, six, six. Each creature you control gets plus one, plus oh for each time it has attacked this turn. It has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. At the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. If you want to do this during your second main phase, hit that landfall, untap all your creatures, and attack again. All right, we got some uh non-creature spells kind of just mainly removal and a little bit of ramp we have frostbite deals two damage if you have to control three or more snow permanents it deals three damage instead to a creature shock can deal two damage to any target shadow spear gives our creature plus one plus one and trample and lifelink it's all over the place right now especially in modern it's uh making waves there 
We have Dragon's Fire and Scorching Dragon Fire. Both of these deal three damage to a uh, creature. This one exiles the creature Planeswalker. This one, does it deal damage to a Planeswalker? Yeah, but this one can also deal upwards of five, six damage or more um, if we have our dragons out on the field. Then we have Shredded Sails. It destroys an artifact, deals four damage to a flyer, but you can also cycle it for two mana. You find some prisoners, a card from the D&D set that has breaking chains, destroy target artifact, or interrogate them. So you exile the top three cards of your opponent's library, you can choose one, and then until the next turn, you get to play that card. It's kind of like pseudo card draw in green or in red, once again, but it also does double duty by destroying artifacts. We have Arcane Signet, taps for a red. We have Main Mind, Maze Mind Tome, so two mana, then you can tap it to scry one. We can also play two, tap it, you draw a card and if you have four if you've done if you do this four times you exile maze mind tome and gain four life so it has a little bit of life gain there we have a couple of three drops with soul seer doing five damage to a creature or planeswalker that it makes sure that that thing goes away because it loses indestructible heraldic banner is going to come in on red give all our creatures plus one plus oh and tap for a red mana then we have perforce's intervention which you either get an x1 or x uh trample and then it dies at the end of the turn we sacrifice it more often than not we're going to deal twice x damage to target creature planeswalker shatter skull smashing can enter as a land a shatter um skull hammer pass but it can also pay red red x deal x damage divided as you choose among two creatures if x is six or more it deals double that damage so you can deal a lot if you can get the eight mana we have a couple more bigger spells we have chandra heart of fire Five mana, five loyalty planeswalker. It has two plus ones. The first one is you discard your hand, exile the top three cards of your library. Till end of turn, you may play cards exiled this way. Some, um, there again, red's kind of pseudo card draw. Another plus one is it deals two damage to any target. Minus nine if you get there. Search your graveyard and our library for any number of red instants and or sorcery cards. Exile them. Shuffle your library. You can cast them this turn, and you add six mana, six red mana to your mana pool. We have Ember Cleave, Mono Red Staple until it rotates. Six mana artifact, it has flash. Uh, it ca costs one less to cast for each attacking creature. It attaches to the creature, it gets plus one plus one and double strike and trample till the end of turn, basically ending games. And Crackle with Power, Red Red XXX. It deals five damage times X five, deals five times X damage to each of up to X targets. So if you can do this on eight, you deal 10 damage to two targets and it just scales up from there we have 19 mountains m castle and breath the den of the bugbear crawling barons faceless haven two creatures we have three creature lands we have field of ruin to destroy other people's creature lands and lands that are annoying and that is our zariel arc druid of avernus all right remember like subscribe notify let's get into a couple of games all right this is a little bit slow for this kind of matchup i think we need to mulligan this is slow too but um, i guess we'll keep first thing we're playing as a four drop is not great we could drop this on two uh, i don't know if that does much for us all right let's believe in the heart of the cards that no no don't want to stop there this could be a a quick one oh those are cool wow deck what's going on i think we played delilah into terror then we can attack and make a copy of the terror if it sticks around. My guess is it's not going to stick around. But you never know. They're reading. They're choosing whether or not they want to blow it up. I think Garrick might be a hard matchup for us. 
They tend to be very removal heavy and then lean on Garrick to win them games. Questing beast. Are we attacking the questing beast and... One black. There's not many one black spells that are played in this format. All right. Let's do this. Let's roll a 15. Shall we? Uh oh. All right. 15 to 20. 15 uh, to. That's fine. One village rights. And here comes Garrick. Or here comes a removal spell. Or here comes a board wipe. Or a, yeah, we'll we'll see. Massacre Worm? Sure. Alright, we can do this. Into... This blowing up this? Okay, so if we do this, then Toral's damage can go to face. Get in for five. Double removal spell? That would be brutal. But they would take three. And we got there. All right. Let's do another game. Mono red against mono red. This is a very good hand. Uh, Delina is a card that I very much want to build at some point. You're going to keep this. Um, just looks like a fun kind of deck, although the synergies around it are kind of rough. <laughs> I'm thinking we're going to play the banner and then hold up shock. Hmm, I think we use our mana efficiently and bone crusher this away. On red. Mm hmm. No need to take any excess damage is here. Alright, um, I think it's just right to play Terror again. We are here to play Zariel, but I think just playing Terror of the Peaks is, is what we need to do. It makes the most sense, the most powerful. It gets a removal spell out of their hands. Sure. Okie dokie, I think we do this because this comes down as a four which kills Gadric it Also gives us that inevitability We have four damage here. We have one damage here if we want it or we can give our creatures plus one plus O oh, and haste Interesting, sure. And then a 
Or didn't you do that pre-combat? Okay, that didn't change how many dudes you got. All right, let's do this. Make a dude. Blow up that dude. Get in for five. They now have enough to bring back the Phoenix, but this still survives. You're playing Command Tower in a mono red deck. Really? Really? Playing a mo command tower in a mono red deck. That is a losing strategy. This is lethal. This is even more lethal. All right, we get to see Zariel's power coming through. All right, let's get into one more, maybe two, depending on how quickly these go. All right, let's do this. All right, we have a two drop and a three drop and a four drop. Uh, I think we can keep this. We are up against Barrowin of Clan Under. I guess because they're like under in the dungeons. Like I said, one drop in the two drop in the three drop or two drop in the three drop into four drop We could play the hammer, but I like Torolf better Don't think that is worth blowing up with this I think we're gonna play the tome Scry with the tome. If that's not a land, we will scry on our upkeep, but it is a land. Okay. That's gonna be scary. Got one turn. I think we're gonna do this. We'll take a hit. Remember to stop on their end step so we can scry one. We can deal four damage to it now. Mm-hmm. No blockies. Sure. Protection from the evens. Man, we cannot do much against. Resolve. Wake bringer. It's good, but our hand is pretty good. I would like a land. Ground my upkeep. Thank you. We can uh, go to main phase. We can play the land. We can. Play this. Attack with this and with this. I think we're going to blow up this now. Do one extra damage there. Two goes to face. This thing is going to get incredibly big. We want to scry one more time on our upkeep. 
Gain some life. Dragon fire. That doesn't help us now. And it might help us later. Mm. Let's draw to Yale. I think we play this. And just attack in with that. And end the turn. We're gonna have a hard time against this thing. Whenever you gain life. Red. I'm gonna have to ride this Phoenix to victory. Do they have removal? Two cards in hand and this. If they can't kill our dragon and our Phoenix, we got the dub. If they can, then yeah, they can't. All right, one more. Let's keep going. Mono red. You want to get your wins? You want to get your stuff? I think this is a pretty good one. All right, let's do another one more game. All right, here we go. All right, to fairy. This could be challenging. I think we're going to keep this and um, play off the back of the maze mine tome to help us grind into things. We have both of our creature lands. Which can be powerful in a matchup like this. One, we have six. We have one, two, three, four, five six. left after. Let's maze mine tome it up. Do you have a two mana counter spell? I'm guessing this is going to be like counter spell dot deck. On their end step, we shall scry. We want to find our six mana dragon. Maybe we want to be playing more of the can't be countered. Let's scry now and take this off. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to play faceless haven, so it's not. One mana counter spell? I don't think there's many one mana counter spells. You might have opt. Nope. We'll do th this again. To fairy time. What are they up to? Terror of the Peaks, that's a good one. And we got the lands to cast it. Right, let's... Um... Do we jam this? Get rid of one counterspell. Let's give them the opportunity to... Um... Trade with the shield break. Counter? Mm -hmm. That's okay with me. 
And we'll scry on there and step again. No land drop, eh? Do I want another land? I don't think it would hurt. Alright, do we try and jam Chandra now? now? You have to be careful with Chandra. Every once in a while, you'll hit the wrong plus one and lose your whole hand. Trust me, it's a sad time. Show me the counter spells. Mm hmm. You eventually have to play your Teferi so you can start drawing some lands. There's a land. Mm hmm. Gain us the life. I don't want the banner. All right. Now, I think we faceless haven into this. And we do this. That goes here. These two go here. Wait, no. We'll just put it all there. Just in case they have some kind of shenanigan. Shenaniganry. Think fast. I don't want to think fast. I just hit Alrin's epiphany. Ooh, baby. Thank God I got that off the top of the deck. I bet they regret drawing that card now. Shark Typhoon. How about this? Mono Red playing Arun's Epiphany. I ain't afraid of no shark typhoon. Oh, it is a very scary card. To ferry again. After a thousand years, I'm getting the hang of this. Let's deal four damage to this bad boy here. All right, we can do this. All of it in. He's going to have to phase out something. Or she, or they. This goes there and it's a game over All right, ladies and gentlemen people of the internet Thank you so much for watching if you're new to the channel like subscribe notify If you are returning hit that like button and make sure you got the notification bell on Have a wonderful morning afternoon evening or night wherever you are in the world from mr. Pisto to you stay safe Bye for now